You know, some people, they, you know, I, I know this whole thing about, you know, we being watched at this time, or we being heard at this time, or the big brother is watching, and the cameras are on, and the satellites are watching, and blah, blah, blah. You know, people are honestly, they're losing themselves in thinking about all of this big brother business that is going outside. Allah watches my enemies. Allah watches all the Muslims' enemies. Allah hears every conversation of every Muslim enemy that is out there. You've got to understand that. Allah knows every single enemy that has made any plan. Before he's even done his plan, Allah even knew that. Allah watches their satellites. Forget their satellites watching us. Allah hears their secret conversations in their, in their buildings that they've got. Whatever you want to call them, whatever group you want to say they are, I think the young, the youth, they get really, ex they get really sort of passionate about, you know, the secret services and the Illuminati and this and that and whatever there is. The young, you know, love this because it's, it's something which is, you know, secret. Anything that is secret, human beings love it. And on top of that, when you have a secret powerful thing, then it's even more intriguing to know about that, to talk about that. And what I feel is that our youngsters, um, they've lost themselves in this because of them thinking about you know how much they they see and what they do all you've got to visualize all you've got to go back to is the Quran talking about the time of Fir'aun Fir'aun he had men on every corner no Banu Israel no person of the followers of Musa salam, before they got released None of them could say anything, do anything without a soldier seeing it. That's how many soldiers he had. There was, no, there was no place without soldiers there. No place. Whenever they came out of their homes, there were soldiers watching them. Whenever they came out. Even when they were, two of them were having a conversation in a corner, a soldier was listening in. And everything was reported back to the authorities. Fir'aun, even what he did is, he told Haman, who was his mason, he told him to build him a tall tower. And he built him a very tall tower. And from there, Fir'aun would go to that tall tower, stand there. And he would watch the entire Banu Israel working for him. Whatever work, whether he's building the pyramids, whatever it was, Fir'aun would stand there and he would watch. And Fir'aun was able to also keep an eye on them through his magicians. See, he had sorcerers who used to tell him things were going on. Regular meetings he would have, he would call them over and he would say, okay, what do you guys see? You know, like fortune tellers? He would have these, and that's how he found out that Musa salam, was going to be born. Because he used to have regular intervals with them, and one of the intervals he had with them is that these sorcerers said to him that there's going to be you know, a, a young boy that will be born in your kingdom this particular year and that boy, if he lives, he's going to destroy your kingdom. So Fir'aun had that given to him by his sorcerers. Now one is physically watching you, one he's got this invisible way of getting communication, whether it's from the jinns or whatever it was that they got the, the sorcerers got it, but he got the information that there's going to be a boy, that he's going to be born. And imagine how much observe, how much Fir'aun is watching. It's, it's the same, it's, it's, worse than, it's worse than the satellites and what they're doing today. Because there's a limit to what they can do today. In those days, Fir'aun did, did not need an excuse to kill you. He could kill you in broad daylight. His soldiers can kill you. The soldiers used to rape women, rape the Banu Israel, take them away from broad daylight in front of their husbands, go and rape them and bring them back. That's what they used to do. You think it's bad what we've got today? You want to see what the Banu Israel... That's why Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal, He reveals so much about Musa and Fir'aun. Because that time will resemble a lot with what we're going through at this moment. So they had all of that going on. So now, look at this. Look at the power. Now, you know, these Muslims today, they say, you know, the Illuminati, they're watching this, they know this, they're, they're going to make this, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. These people, they lose themselves completely in making themselves feel that this big brother and the Illuminati whatever is watching them so much. What you've got to understand, Akhi, and my brother, my sister, 
is that Allah Azza wa Jal, do you think He doesn't know their plans? He doesn't know what they're doing. He doesn't see what they do. He doesn't hear what they say. He's got all the plans to himself, all of them, before they even occurred. He knew what they're going to do. He knew how far they're going to go. He knew how many of them are going to get together. Every single one of the enemies of Islam, Allah saw every single action of his life. And Allah heard every single thing he said in his whole life. Every conversation, every meeting they had, Allah was there. Allah Azza wa Jal heard everything, Allah saw everything, Allah knew everything. And when you know that, and you put your trust in Allah, just like Allah then with Fir'aun thought, okay, I'm going to wipe out one generation. So what did he do? When the sorcerers told him this year, the, that, that boy is going to be born, he said, okay, that's it, fine. All the boys that are born this year, wherever you find them, newborn baby boys, kill them. Told the soldiers, go out, they kill them. I can imagine. Imagine that, you know, you think they're bad today. Are they going around killing all the, you know, killing innocent people in front of their faces, you know, taking, snatching their newborn babies away, killing them and leaving them dead. Now, are they going that far? That, they haven't gone that far. Okay, there's, there's fighting going on across the world. There's murdering going on. There's rape going on. But it's not this bad. How this will, can imagine one whole year, they're going around any newborn baby boy of the Banu Israel was killed. So there must have been thousands and thousands of babies that were killed. Thousands and th tens of thousands of them killed. Then, Allah wants to show them who's in charge. Allah wants to show them who's in charge. So they made all these plans. He saw his, his soldiers are on the guard. He, they're going every single night, finding out which woman is pregnant. And as soon as she delivers, they're going in there and seeing is it a girl or a boy. They don't need permission, they're just going straight inside the doors. Seeing if it's a girl or a boy. If it's a boy, they take it away, kill it. If it's a girl, they let it live. And they're watching all the women. How many women pregnant? They've got a count of the women that are pregnant. So they know that Musa salam's mother is pregnant as well. So they've got, a, they've got a, their eyes on her. And she's, she's waiting for her moment that she's going to deliver. When Allah Azza wa Jal, He wants to save someone, can anyone come in front of Allah? Can anyone come? So what happens is, they're killing boys, they're killing boys, they're killing boys until Musa Alayhi's mother, she gives birth. When Musa Alayhi's mother gives birth, then they, they got the news that she's gone through labor. So the soldiers are coming down. Musa Alayhi's mother gets scared. So it's just a newborn. She puts it straight into to a basket. And she runs outside of a house with the baby boy in the basket. She's trying to run away from the soldiers. And then the soldiers are catching up. So she comes right to the river and she's fearing they're going to kill my son. So Allah says in the Quran, I put into her heart, throw the baby into the river. Throw the basket into the river. And she, and, and she was fearing and she had grief. Allah records all that in the Quran. She had grief, she had fear. And with the soldiers coming up towards her, they're going to catch her soon. She just threw the basket into the river. Now, if she threw something into the river, right, the soldiers came right up to her. Now, she's delivered a baby, right? Now, if, they've, if they wanted to see what she threw, they're going to be looking at the river with where the current is flowing, right? Where the current is flowing. So the soldiers are now looking at the way the current is flowing and there's nothing there. Because Allah took the basket against the current upwards. The water is flowing down downwards and Allah took the basket upwards. Because Allah wants to take it to one place. Now look at it. When Allah wants to do something, who are the Illuminati? Who, are, who in the world are these Freemasons and these... When Allah wants to do something, they can do as many plans as they want. So the basket now moves upwards. Moves up, 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 up. Now Allah wants to give it to particular people. So what does He do? He makes, at that moment, He makes Fir'aun and his wife Asya, they come out for a walk. So they're walking. 
And they, Allah brings both of them right to the river bank. And they're walking along the river bank, they're having a nice day, nice stroll. Suddenly, this basket comes all the way up to the river bank and gets stuck at a, at a tree. So then Asiya, uh, she, she runs and she sees that there's a, there's a basket. She picks the basket up and there's a newborn baby, newborn boy. Now it's a boy. What did Firaun say for all the boys for this whole year? What did he say? Kill him. And Allah says in the Quran, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي the, the one who's in charge of this order to kill all the baby boys. The one who made all the soldiers go out and kill every single one. The one who made his soldiers stand there, watch them, he heard the sorcerers. The one who is fearing his kingdom is going to go, so he has to kill all these boys. Allah says, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي He says, O oh Musa, your, your love, I put it into Asia, I, I put it into Fir'aun. Now first Asya saw when Asya saw it, she said, she picked up the boy, she said, Firon, me and you, we don't have children. Me and you, we don't have children. No one knows who's, which boy is this. It's lost boy. No one knows which boy is this. So can you please just have mercy on this boy? We'll make this our own child. I will tell everybody this is our son. Now one, he's thinking, one out of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of boys. What's the chance of this one being the one that ruins my kingdom? Almost next to nothing. So Allah puts love for Musa salam, in his greatest enemy's heart. And Allah says, okay, if you're on, you wanted to kill him, okay, I'm going to make you nurture him. <laughs> you wanted to kill him, I'm going to make you feed him. I'm going to make you clothe him. I'm going to make you give him water and love him and play with him. I'm going to make you do that. I'm going to make you like his father. You want to kill him? Go and try and kill him. So now he says, okay, let's take him. So he takes him. Now, when he takes him, now Asya, she's never had children, so she's got no milk. The women in the palace, none of them are breastfeeding. And so they, and, and Musa was crying. He has, you know, young baby. He's crying. <laughs> Firon's going mad. He says, go on, bring, bring these, you know, bring, bring one of these women who's got, who's got milk and feed him. So the, all the women, the, the, a lot of women come. One after the other, one after the other. Whichever one gives her breast to Musa he's not, he's not taking it. Now he's not taking us any single woman's milk. One after the other, one after tens and tens of tens of comments. Firon's thinking, what kind of kid have I, have I bought here inside my family? But Asiya is not letting Firon do anything to this kid. She wants to keep the kid. So there's got to be a way. Now suddenly there's a little girl there. Who is this little girl? This girl is Musa Alaihissalam's sister. And she had followed the basket she had seen Firaun and Asi walk, she saw them pick it up, she saw them took it in the palace. So she came up. She said, if you allow me, I can tell you, there's one woman I know, she's a very good woman. And there's no babies that ever refuse her milk. If you tell me, I'll tell that woman to come, she can try. Now they're fed up, there's kids crying, wah, wah, there's the noise is doing them in. So then they say, okay, go and bring that woman. Who is that woman? That is Musa's own mother. Yesterday she was fearing, just a moment ago she's fearing, what's going to happen to my kid? Allah brought her own child right in front of her, she, she sees Musa and then she gives him milk and now the mother is reunited with the son in the enemy's house. Every day she will come and see her son, every day she will milk her son, every day she will play with her son. Allah Azza wa Jal shows who's in charge. You want to say, you want to say who's in charge? All these things that they've got around there, Brothers and sisters, all I don't care how many big brothers out there watching us and listening to us on satellites and this and that. Who's in charge? The one in charge is Allah. Finished. The one in charge is Allah. When Allah wants to do it, <laughs> who's gonna who's gonna do anything? Now Musa alayhi salam, you look at the whole plan of how Allah Allah Azza wa Jal brings Musa alayhi salam up and how he takes him back to the Banu Israel, 
how he makes him feel that he's part of them, how he goes to the to all these things. I haven't got the time to say all of it. Inshallah, one day we'll call, we'll, we'll cover the stories of the MBI, Inshallah. But what my point is that though others watch us, though others listen to us, the one that is in charge and the one that counts is who? It is Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's the one that we have to have fear of. There's a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that whoever whoever fears whoever fears the creation uh, no, no, whoever doesn't fear Allah whoever doesn't fear Allah will fear his creation whoever doesn't fear Allah will fear Allah's creation or some of his creation they will fear him and whoever fears Allah the creation will fear them you understand that whoever doesn't fear Allah they will they will fear have fear for some of Allah's creation whichever those people are they will have some fear in their hearts but whoever actually fears Allah and has true fear in the heart for Allah then the creation will fear them the creation will have fear of them.